Without a ball, it's just a court. Without your spirit, it's only a game. So together with the fans, we bring our best. Hennessy is excited to celebrate the intersection of basketball with art, music, and fashion. Each of these elements of culture represent ways that fans, players, supporters pay homage to the game, both on and off the court. Hennessy and Mitchell and us have come together for the ultimate drop, a limited edition collection to mark their shared love for basketball culture and to celebrate Hennessy's continued partnership with the league. The exclusive collection will have a limited drop available for both in retail and online and will be featured on the Hennessy Arena Tour, making stops in San Francisco, Saturday, March 9th, Dallas, Sunday, March 17th, Atlanta, Saturday, March 30th. Come see Club 520 Podcast taped live in each city. For your next pregame, let's share a twist on the classic, the Hennessy Margarita. A squeeze of fresh lime juice and a bit of agave syrup. Top it off with some ice and a salsa rim. Mix it, shake it, pour it. And enjoy the spirit of the NBA. Hennessy, without your spirit, it's only a game. 21 and over only. Please drink responsibly. Subscribe to our YouTube, Club 520. Uh, we clowning on that mother. Just hit the button. <laughs> God. Don't ask more questions. Subscribe. <laughs> but, hey, you know what it is, Club 520. We in Dallas with it this weekend. How y'all what, man? We from Indianapolis, Indiana. It's 317 day around our way. We grab, you know what I'm saying? Happy to be out here with y'all celebrating. Doing it in with Hennessy Arena one more game. But like I said, it's Club 520 Podcast. I'm the host. My name is DJ Wells. We got a legend to my left, special guest. We're going to introduce my man's last, but to my far left, my dog, Bishop B. Hen, out the Burleys. Green Leaf. How you what, Nasty? Cool and nasty. What's up, Dallas? We here, baby. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. Now, look, now look Matrix. I know what I'm saying I know your foot game crazy, but have you ever seen the black forces with the white laces? That's how we was in Indianapolis. <laughs> That's how he was in Indianapolis. <laughs> <laughs> no, I ain't never seen those, but it's they clean though. I like it. out the gate. Now said them is clean. Yeah. Go well, hey, hey, you know all the, hey, you know the black Air Force ones went nasty, but you know everybody. You know, That's penitentiary yeah. chances right yeah. there. Huh? Hey, you on that criminal vibe, huh? Yeah. <laughs> he might not rob you, but he might scam you with the white lace, you know what I'm saying? Hey, gee. <laughs> my bad, my bad. But to my right, my dog, Young Nacho, Young Teague, how you what, man? Man, I'm cooling, bro. We in Dallas. It's been a good time. The vibes is right. Hennessy got me right. Y'all know how I get when I get on that Hennessy. <laughs> I get to sweating a little bit. It's about to act a fool in here. <laughs> Don't do too much trying to renew this contract. Oh, my fault, my fault, my fault. <laughs> but to my left, we got a legend, 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 legend. Y'all don't even notice he from the Midwest, though. Yeah, he from the Midwest, but he made big noise down here in the city of Dallas. Put a banner up. We got the Matrix, Sean Marion, in the building. Appreciate you pulling up, big dog. Man, appreciate yeah. y'all having me. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm excited because I know y'all got some shit for me. <laughs> oh, yeah. We definitely got a lot to talk about. But first, you know what I'm saying? We always talk about the footwear game. People who don't know this is sleep, but you a legend, especially with the footwear game and the Jordan PEs. How did that come about? So, look. No, it's a it's an interesting story. So everybody been calling me about them damn shoes too, though. Fat Joe was like, I need a pair of those, and every, I'm like, yo, I didn't even have a pair when everybody was asking me for a pair because during my, uh, I think it was my third year, mm -hmm. and I almost basically became a free agent shoe. So like, I was a shoe hole. So everybody was sending me kicks, and uh, I was gonna go with Jordan. A lot of people don't know this. I was gonna sign with Jordan initially, but uh, Jordan's like tricks. I can give you no money. I was, oh, like, I was like, what? He wouldn't just give me the brand, you know what I'm saying, the shoes and stuff mm -hmm. and everything under the Jordan umbrella. But I was like, shit, if I'm under Nike, I'm getting it anyway, right? He was like, yeah. So, so I was like, well, they, and they gonna pay me. So I was like, MJ, I love you to death, but I'm going, to, I'm going to Team Nike. Now I get that check by all means. Yeah, yeah. But he made me, he was making, he was sending me Jordans throughout the year mm -hmm. when I was deciding on what team, I, what, what uh, brand I want to go with. So... He ended up sending me a shipment of the PE5s, and they got lumped in with everything else. And what happened was, um, during that process, I was getting so many shoes, and I was wearing, I was wearing 12s a lot of the time. So um, they came, the customs came in, but I never received them because I was wearing a new pair of shoes every game. So with so many that came in, they got lumped in, and then I was moving around and doing so much, and went to Nike. And they, uh, they had made me a custom pair of PEs, but P.J. Tucker got them because he went into the vault. So a lot of teams, don't, people don't know this, a lot of teams have a, a locker room full of just shoes mm -hmm. and all the guys play through. Now, typically, if, you, if you're uh, with whoever brand you are, they send you some shoes home with you during the summertime, you know, but they always keep a stock for you, you know what I'm saying, if you with the, the ten, your long tenure guy. So 
they got lumped in. He went through there rummaging and found two pair. Of course he did. So oh so it was what's even better than that though is fucked up because he got them. I didn't I, so I never got them. <laughs> so so now now hold on. I never received them, but I do have a locker here in my house that I haven't really been through all the sneakers. So I could have some at the house, but dude, I ain't trying to go in that mess right now. So uh but I don't have none, but then Nike had a few pair at the facility this summer. Booker was there working out, mm -hmm. went to the campus, you know, finishing up his final stuff for his shoe, and he found a pair in the locker room, you know, in the Nike locker. And, you know, we wore the same size shoe, so he grabbed them, and then he worked out with them and posted, sent me a video of him working out of them in L.A. And then I was like, yo, how you got a pair? And I still ain't got a pair yet. <laughs> yeah. So then he was like, okay, whatever. So then he was like, yo, of course he wanted me to be in his Nike commercial that came out, and then he ended up wearing them the night of the Jersey retirement, he, wore, he only wore them twice, and then he gave them to me because I don't have a pair, as I know of right now. So that's the only pair I have that he gave to me because he got them from Nike this summer. Nah, that's hard, bro. That's crazy. I want to ask you, how in the hell did you end up at Vincennes University, bro? We from Indiana? Trailblazers, but... baby, all day. So, uh, Vincennes. So when I was coming out of high school, right, you know, um, we, me and my boys were talking about this yesterday, and... Um, like, I, I didn't pass the ACT score back then. You know, remember, it was ACT and yeah, SAT. Yeah. So I was yeah. one point short. I had a GPA. I had, a, like, a B. I was always been a smart. So I just, for one part, I missed one big part on that test. I was one point short. And I didn't want to wait another, another, another half a year to take the test again. So I decided, I was like, fuck it. I'm, I, wanna, I need to get out of here. I need to go play ball. So then I, I visited Vincennes, and I visited in Northwest Mississippi uh, Junior Colleges. And I was like, eh. Let me go and go to VU. Once I went to VU, the campus, it was, it was a no-brainer. And the coach was like, yo, whatever you need and whatever you want, you got it here. So locked in. And that was, that was two of my best years I've ever had playing, though. When we, we did everything. And uh, they laid the red carpet out for me. It was dope. Nah, for sure. We used to go down there and party. And oh. I used to see your name on the banner. I'm like, ain't no fucking way. Yeah, I thought they was lying. Listen, <laughs> listen, those parties. That's Sean dude. Mary from 38th Street. Right. <laughs> you gotta be from the ghetto yeah, back in there. Man. Man. No way. Man, you know what? This has got so much history, though. Y'all know that? Yeah. Oh, man, all do. the legends went through there. Bob McAdoo, Eric Williams, and mm -hmm. Tyrone Nesby. Some guy, a lot of guys yeah, that played yeah, the pro yeah. had great careers there. You know, I think I was the best one, but, you know. Talk your shit. By far. Yeah, that's yeah. what it is. You know, I, I don't. I'm a spec, factual guy. I don't, I don't lie. I need to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Come on, you was all conference two years in a row, baby. Oh yeah, yeah. Male student after the year as well too, though. <laughs> a lot of study in the Vincennes, huh? Yeah. He didn't know about the Vincennes parties. Mm -hmm. Legendary. Oh, they were. I ain't gonna even lie to. You. They did some shit there that a lot of Division One schools don't do. It was okay. it was some dope walkie-talkie type shit. <laughs> uh, that's so hard. They got I ain't, lookouts. I ain't never been it oh, <laughs> the walkie-talkies. No, no, no. <laughs> so they got the, they got the walkie-talkie headset. They got lookout guys. Man, it's, it was it was late. Tell them about when you went to Diddy House. Oh, <laughs> Sean, don't entertain. Oh my god, my fault. My fault. <laughs> that's for another podcast. My He's bad. Glad we ain't at the crib. Oh, I was gonna say some shit on this. Oh <laughs> damn, I'm a chill. All right, all right, my bad, my bad. <laughs> Oh my God! <laughs> they got some hey, different walkie-talkies hey, at that party. Don't do that. Uh, <laughs> this, this, is, this is about Sean uh, Mary. I don't, don't want to talk about any house like, after I'm this. Fall, I'm fall, I'm fall. <laughs> back, back to regular schedule program. But obviously, you uh, transferred to UNLV. How was that process like? Because I know everybody in the world wanted you coming out as a JUCO All-American. Obviously, the way you played, you went to the school that really fit the way you played basketball. So look. So my dream school was North Carolina, dude. Mm. I was going to be a Tar Heel. I was like, I, man, that's all I fucked with. And MJ, man, you know, more than I say. So I was actually, they had one scholarship available. And Bob McAdoo was the only guy from, that came from North Carolina. They recruited from junior college. So Dean Smith, that's one guy ever. So I was going to be the second guy. Dean Smith told me he had a scholarship available. It's a crazy story, too. He had, a, he had one scholarship come available, and he was, if, it's yours if you want it. My coach came to me and was like, yo, it's yours if you want it. I was like, for real? Oh, shit. Don't say no more. <laughs> say less. So get through the year. Some shit happened or whatever. And I guess he ended up getting sick or whatever. And he had to retire. Mm -hmm. So that kind of put that on hold because I wanted to go play for Dean Smith. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? That's the, the legend, the myth, the, all the history, everything there. So I want to go play with him, and then it just didn't happen. So 
I was like, okay, now I'm not going to North Carolina, so now I need to go somewhere warm. I'm tired of being this damn cold. <laughs> that snow in the end, that was a motherfucker. Man, being different. in the crib, yeah, it was a different beast down there. So, shit, I, I, I put all my energy towards the West Coast. So I was like, you know, USC was hounding me, UNLV. So I went and visited both of those places. And I was like, I felt more comfortable and more at home with the Rebels, man. And, uh, you know, my guy, Coach Glenn Cyprian, my guy, man. That's my mm-hmm. guy to this day, man. You know, he was like, yo, come down here, I'm going to take care of you. So, hey, I went out there and... What and do you be- mean by that? Huh? Oh, I got a bag. Oh, okay. Just making sure. The real oh, NIL. Okay, okay. Come yeah. on. Stop playing that game. You know, it, it, it wasn't legal then. You know what I'm saying? Oh, it wasn't Vegas. It was legal. Oh, everything goes out there. You know, they, the stories you hear about the rebels back in the day yeah. with the, though, that shit was true. Oh, okay. All that shit with Stacey Augman had his own business. Them guys used to walk in the mall. They used to give them bags and anything they want. Man, that shit was real. That's fine. Man, Vegas is one stop shop, kid. Everything goes out there, man. And uh, I loved it out there. It right. was. One, it was just one, <laughs> one step in phase on to the next one. You should have never went to Wake. You should have went to UNLV. Uh-huh. Uh, boy, I, I'm a chill. <laughs> yeah. What you trying to say, bro? No, you got a legendary Vegas story. We're going to gonna relax. We're here for the company, y'all. Yeah, for the on company, to the 99 NBA draft. <laughs> <laughs> We're here with the ninth pick from the 99 draft. How was it, man, going to the league? How was that process? I mean, it was... Uh, Dream come true. I think you know when you when you set out to to do certain things and being exposed to to being around guys in the league and stuff at a young age, man, you, yeah. you create that appetite. And if, and a lot of people don't have a lot of drive. You know, it take it take a lot of sacrifice and a lot of a lot of discipline to be successful at this game. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't think that people really truly understand that. Like a lot of people take a lot of things for granted. You know, I've been truly blessed to play this game a long time and give it. I think what the identity, I was a big part of what the identity of the league is right now. If Facts. you know anything about Facts. basketball, that's, that's just is what it is. First guy to go small to make a team transition to playing guys out of normal positions. So, well, but my mindset is totally, man, I'm a, uh, I'm a dog, man. <laughs> you, know, uh, you know, one of the things I, I prided myself on when I stepped on that floor, you was going to get every, every ounce of energy and every effort you could possibly get from me. Mm-hmm. And uh, if you know anything about the game, you know I did that. Respect. My guys hate it. Oh, oh shit. <laughs> Yo. Man, we gonna have to pause. Hey, they got, <laughs> they, they, they got ghosts in this motherfucker. <laughs> so somebody Come here, break. Somebody is in here doing some shit they ain't supposed to be doing. They strong as hell. Oh, damn. <laughs> Shout out to Elite Security. <laughs> That 24 hour fitness going crazy. <laughs> Did it? <laughs> well, I'm glad them people moved. I was sitting right there. It, it looked good. <laughs> well, <I saw> the- <laughs> uh, now, y'all missed uh, the bag. I better go back yeah, and sit. Hey, your hat was going to be flat. <laughs> 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 Top of that was going to be through. <laughs> that feather on there was done, my boy. That's all we was going to see. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, I think everybody needs a shot. Hey. <laughs> it was. Well, hey. I seen this too. I'm still high though. <laughs> <laughs> Did I say that? <laughs> oh shit. I'm retired. I can do what the hell Man, I want. They put, to. The, they put the plant in front of their <laughs> I'm, gr- okay. I'm grown. I'm retired. Shit. They resourceful. Man, I enjoy life. <laughs> Black retirement. people are real creative. Do I enjoy retirement? Are you enjoying retirement right yeah, now? I get to clown with these dudes every day, man. It's fun. Man. And I get to go on Hennessy tours and enjoy new people and experience new no, no. things. It's all good, man. No, I'm serious. Like, when I, when I, when I ask that question, I mean, like, you, mm-hmm. you're saying that, but, like, a lot of people don't enjoy it. Like, nah. the, tra- the transition for most guys is harder than you think. Nah, it, it was. It, the first week was hard. And then after week two, we did a podcast. I was straight. Oh, okay, <laughs> yeah. okay. Got something to fill that void already. Yep. No, but, like, you know, I'm the, I'm the vice president of the Retired Player Association. So I'm going to shout out to all my OGs that paid the way for us because I think I, they don't get enough attention and enough flowers mm-hmm. because Thanks. we don't talk about them. I know everybody is more caught up in the more current and what's going on right now with the current guys and shit. But the guys that, that, that lay that foundation for us, they don't get their flowers, and they deserve it, hands down. Like, every time I see you with OG, I mean, I'm, all, I'm all like, thank you, thank you, thank you. That's real. And, yeah. like, man, you, you, you don't realize the sacrifice they did for us to make it how easy. And our, ours was kind of easy. Yeah. They really got it easy now. 
Like, well, can you imagine playing right now, dude? The shit that they got right now, dude. I'm playing 25 years, easy. That's, I enjoy talking to the retired players, the older players, because we get to pay homage to them. You know, let them yeah. know that we appreciate them. That's why we happy as hell to have you on the podcast. Like when we see yeah. you in the comments, we all like, damn, you see Sean Mary <laughs> Matrix on there. So we all excited, bro, because uh, we really want to show y'all love. So we try to get more retired players, or older players. I we wouldn't mind that. doing with the current players, but. It was a lot more fun. No, I, re I respect that, man. I appreciate it, man. I think For sure. It's, it's just little things, man. You and know? especially like you said, like, y'all Phoenix team, you especially, like, changed the way basketball was played in that time period because y'all was the first really team to kind of go small ball, mm -hmm. which I really wasn't small. Like, yeah. obviously, you play in a big position. You could rebound. You could do everything. But it made everybody else adjust to that. And especially when y'all had it, when y'all had Q Rich, when y'all had Young Joe, Joe Johnson. Joe Johnson. Come on, man. So a lot of people forget that. You know, when we, they talk about seven seconds or less and they talk about the team, they don't even that, – that first year, it was fucking – it was crazy. Yeah, mm -hmm. And – but, like, when everybody is referencing, I ask them, what year are you talking about, though? Because mm -hmm. you have to define it because that year that – we only played together one year. Mm -hmm. yeah. that, that, that started in five. So uh, there's so much that go into that, and there's so many conversations. And I know uh, the media great at creating these narratives and everybody soak it up and eat it up like – Man, but it was it's so much other shit going behind the scenes. Yeah. And so many feelings you have in the locker room that and you know, media really truly express or understand it. You know, so especially when you got that mindset of what you're trying to accomplish and you see it there. You know, I think uh, you know, uh mental toughness is one of the things that I think a lot of a lot of guys in this league right now don't have right now. Mm. Like, no, listen, we got some talented guys in the NBA right now, and I love the Diversity, I love the magnitude of some of these guys, the things that they've been able to do on the floor. But man, this right here, like that mental toughness to fight through certain th certain things on that court at that time, man, you can see when mental fatigue is a big part of the game that people just automatically give in. Yeah. And that's the one thing I, I loved about the, all the older guys. Play. Man, you know, you was gonna, you was gonna, whether they were scoring or not, you was gonna get their 100% effort though. They knew when they stepped on that court, when people played me, they knew damn well they had to lace them motherfucking shoes up. No, or they was gonna get ran at the fucking gym. I mean, it was just that I was gonna embarrass your ass out here. Whether it be just stopping you or I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you 30 points at the other end. So that's the thing that that's the mentality I have because I, you know, I, I just feel like like why are you not competing though? And I see it. That's why that's the reason I can't coach. I know when motherfuckers ain't playing hard. Yeah. Like I'm I'm, I'm coming straight at your heart though, and this and this sucks. It, 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 it eats at me. I'm like yo, dude, you can play harder than that. We got so many versatile and dynamic players in this league and in, in the game, and, and it's steady getting there. It's getting younger and younger, of course, but like, man, what happens to this like, yo, I'm locking your ass up there. We can, we can be boys and drink afterwards, yeah. but we get on this court, you ain't my, you my, you my enemy right now. Ain't gonna be no laughing and joke. I'm gonna bust your motherfucking ass. Do you feel like social media and like players being so involved with their brands off the court plays a big deal into that? So, I, personally, listen, I, Sometimes I feel like some of the guys, I'm not saying all the guys, mm -hmm. there are some definitely some great players in the NBA that, that love and pride themselves in this game and dedicate themselves. But there's a lot of guys who, who think about social media first in the game and everything else comes later. That's real. Like their approach is for social media versus the game. What happened to the, your love and your passion for the game first and then everything else comes later? That's when you see it and you see it in certain guys. I ain't, I ain't listen, I'm not telling you something that is not obvious, it's right in your face. It's up, it's up to everybody else to choose what they want to see or not. Real. Is that a Phoenix Suns team though that you that you played one year with the most talented team you think you ever played on? Shit, oh, y'all had a motherfucking whip. Yeah, we we was we was tough, but man, you remember I played in 2014, 2015 uh, uh, with Bron in Cleveland. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know so you. So it was Kyrie, Bron, J.R. Smith, Amon Shepard, Kevin Love. Uh, I mean Mike Miller. Uh, Brendan Haywood, we had a, we had a whip. I ain't Perkins. gonna lie, Matrix. I'm taking that Phoenix team over that squad. Bro. No, so I'm telling you the the depth though. I'm nah. on both teams, so I, I understand that. So I ain't, I ain't complaining. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna take that Cavs team. Yeah. You are you gonna yeah. take the Cavs? They had Brian and Kyrie. Kyrie and Brian, bro. What are we talking about? So you know what though? If I'm on that team though, and it depends on if I'm starting or not. If I'm if I'm in my role transitioning out. Okay, yeah, but if I'm playing, Young Matrix, 
Oh, oh. So you low key <laughs> saying you would have locked up Bron. That's how it kind of. That's why I was strong playing. <laughs> but I'm on the team though, so like, no, no, no. So I'm on that no. roster though. I know. So if I'm if I'm starting, I started the season off that year starting at two guard, which is crazy. But I love it. I I, I respect it because I can do it all. So at the two? Yeah. <laughs> no, but uh, if I'm starting on that team, uh, that that Cleveland team don't be better. But if I'm not starting, doing a, I'm 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 on my way out. Oh, Phoenix, we we rocking, we kicking. Oh, we we coming hard. <laughs> I'm hard. I want to get off that. I want to yeah. ask you one question, bro. Growing up, when I was little, I used to shoot from down here. How the hell did your shit stay there when you became grown? <laughs> First of all, my shot ain't that low. Man, <laughs> Second, hey, hey, you should get out of pocket. Get on his ass, hey. man. Get on his ass. No, nah, for real. Hey. I used to be like on the game. Hey. I could never time your shot because that. <laughs> Hey, it's cool, bro. I mean, hey, you, you, you made it, bro. Hey, so <laughs> let me ask you a question, though. All right. Name me two people in the league that shoot the same. I don't know two no, people. No, no, you don't. I don't. So, so it's funny because I used to, like, when I played, though, you know what's, you know what's really, really, really fucked up when I played? This is really messed up. They used to pay more attention to my shot than when I was doing on the floor. Yeah. So you don't, you don't hear him talking about no, 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 nobody's, no job Morant or anybody. Even so, even look at look at the Splash Brothers, the best shooters in NBA history right For now. Sure. Don't they don't shoot nowhere alike, do they? Nah. Not even close. So, so with that being said, though, when I was like when I was playing, this is why a lot of times a lot of guys oh, they feel like they get because everybody was labeling me underrated my whole career. Mm -hmm. I was underrated talent, all this other stuff. And it got to a point where it was kind of eating up. And I'm like, why am I underrated? I'm doing shit out here at 6'7 that most uh, seven footers is not doing in the league. No, nah, you ain't facts. getting 20 and 10 and, and two blocks and, and two steals. He's not doing it. No, nah, you, know you was goaded so, now. So, 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 so when I sit here and, and you ask me that question, I was like, are you trying to defer that to some, give somebody else the credit or versus not giving me my flowers? Or, no, or no, what? no, we give time. you a flower. No, I'm no, no, no. To figure out. No, no, so doing, that, that's what they did. <laughs> How though. you get it down yeah. here? This I'm it. talking about all, the form. It just is what it is. That's what I'm saying. I just no, told I'm you that. No, I'm saying, is it like when you was younger, you just always shot? Cause no, you, dude, I just have a lower arch than everybody else. I shoot with two hands. I mean, I shoot with one hand just like oh, everybody else. Nah, it's all good. But we yeah. knew you was a killer. I know you a killer. I obviously played against you. Been a fan for years. But I was just think like, damn. Because, you know, you, you mimic people. Yeah, when yeah, you're a yeah, younger yeah. dude, you mimic people. And I used to just wonder, like, damn, what was that like? Would you mimic somebody that it was when you were younger? How did it come about? No, man, I broke my wrist and fingers, everything. But like, no, it's just natural, dude. And I just kept busting everybody's ass with it. <laughs> nah, for sure. Yeah. Now you were part of some crazy NBA moments. I don't know if two people privy you. First, we gonna start with that 03 All Star game, man. One of the oh, most Jordan. iconic All Star games of all time. Obviously, the West got that win, but how was it to just be in that environment? Because that was a historic moment for the NBA, especially with Jordan's last All Star game. Just to be in that moment and to actually get to play in that moment. So I used to work when I was in Vincennes. I used to work Jordan camp. Fire. So so I was in there, and we got a, it was some footage that went viral last couple of years during during COVID yeah. of of that pickup run. Like he had, he had some amazing pickup runs during his camp, and a lot of people don't know that. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And when I when I tell you, uh, like you, you you wish you was there, you wish you was there. Everybody who went there, who went to his camp, came from like either you uh, know University of uh, Arizona at the time, North Carolina, uh, the Dukes, the big the big time yeah. uh, guys who you know what I'm saying they were looking mm -hmm. forward to trying to be you know Zay Jordan or, or Team Nike and stuff. So it was it was truly special. But man, you know. MJ, man, come on, man. That's, that's, you we ever call, get call, the best we, of him at the We call runs? him Black Jesus, baby. You get the best of Jordan at the runs? No, no. A couple times I was on his team, but, you know, we, we uh, like, it's a couple of holidays in there, everybody, but, you know, Jordan take that shit serious. Yeah, uh, we like, know. We talked to Ron Artest. I loved it. I loved it. When he played pickup, dude, he came, we, we worked out, man. It wasn't like, we, we come in the ball. We come to work. We're not coming here just to create some content, you know, no, you man, know to, to make it. everybody look good. That, man, them shit's... Man, you, you, you go in these gyms right now. You go back in the closed gyms and see the runs that we had. Dude, you'd be like, what the hell? What yeah. we doing? This ain't even nowhere near the magnitude of the competition that, that these guys are playing mm -hmm. now. We, dude, it was fucking war out there. Like, regular season or not, dude, when we working out, we working out. Yeah. yeah. I could tell by y'all All-Star game, speaking like that, All-Star game, y'all playing so Come serious. On, man. We dude. was watching the highlights the other day before we prepared for this and like see how hard y'all was playing compared to this year. It's crazy. Man, crazy. Dude, I was all over MJ in that last shot. 
Yeah. And like, listen, there's such thing as great defense, but there's such thing as better offense. Like, that was one of them situations, though. Yeah. Like, he literally barely got that off of my fingers. I was really trying to d, d his ass up. <laughs> and, you know, we still won, though. Kobe got fouled by Jermaine O'Neal. Next play, we still Kobe was hey. <laughs> Kobe wasn't trying to lose. But nah, I respect that. <laughs> no, we do. This, this, this is for real. Like, Pop was like, yo, Matrix, go get him. <laughs> Damn. Damn. Yeah, like you, like so they you don't have, you they ain't have no that sympathy, no. bro. He going out, man. Let MJ go out on top, man. No, 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 no. no. Cause he wouldn't let y'all go out on top. Nah, definitely. He, would. he, he would. probably wouldn't want to so know the way. Even, they even the best part of that weekend, though. You know, the best part of that weekend, the Mariah Carey singing the national anthem in that, that Jordan dress. Oh yeah. my God. Talk Ooh. about it. Good Lord have mercy. I wish she sang "Hero to Me." <laughs> <laughs> that boy out of pocket. I'll take it right now. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Nick Cannon. Voice a little shaky and everything. I don't care. <laughs> you crazy. But next moment, man, 04 Olympics, man. That team that y'all had, a lot of talent. Obviously, we know the outcome with that. But how was that entire experience, you know what I'm saying? Represent the country and get to play with people in the league that you play and represent the country with. So, you know, that was, <laughs> that was, a, that was a crazy year. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of shit that went on. Whole lot. Uh, before we even left the country here, man, it was a shit show. Oh man, it's it's a lot of stuff and a lot of stuff, a lot of stories that I came out about certain things. Some of that shit was cap. Like that's one thing I don't believe. I ain't, I ain't gonna finish sit here and lie to you about no bullshit. They don't need to. But so we, uh, what happened that first night? We get there, we get to Florida because we we all started in Jacksonville, Florida that year, mm -hmm. and we was hanging out. And I was with Bubba Chuck, of course. Shout out to Ivo. So, so you know, moment y'all go, <laughs> go uh, you give, 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 him that, give him that 12 pack of Heineken, he's good to go. So if y'all don't know who Bubba Chuck is, it's AI. Yeah. yeah. So uh, <laughs> so we all partying and getting it in, and then like it was uh, the first call, first practice. And it was a couple guys like, I'm not even finna put people on board, but it was a couple guys like, I was like, shit, this is the first day. <laughs> we already fucking, fucked up already. So, uh, it's me, of course, Stephon was on that team, and mm -hmm. uh, Bubba Chuck, that, that was our two backcourt. And then Richard Jefferson was on that team, LeBron, Carmelo, the young guys, D-Wade, all those guys. Uh, but man, when we left here, we, I, we honestly felt good about the trip. It started off pretty good, but then, man, Andre Miller and, uh, <laughs> and <laughs> Paul got into it, man. <laughs> Damn, so you think that's when it went downhill? Man, it was kind of going downhill already, man. It was just yeah. a... It, it was an interesting mix of guys. I think it was it was a great talent-wise team, but yeah. international play is totally different. And a lot of people don't understand that. Mm -hmm. And and I think the mindset you got to have when you're playing for your country is not the same as you're playing for your team. Yeah. It's a big difference. You, you actually need to elevate. And um, we were so all over the board, though, man. And, uh, you know, I felt, I felt bad for uh, Larry Brown, Pop, and all them because everybody was young and, mm -hmm. and yeah, a mixture of guys and everybody. Guys, some guys going this way, some guys is going that way, man. It just, I was just like, uh, how are we gonna make this work? You know, yeah. and it's like, and it wasn't like Arab people didn't really dislike each other. It was just more just like, it's, it's just an imbalance. Mm, that makes sense. For sure. And it sucked that we we fell short. We I mean we finished with the bronze medal. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You know that last game I had to do be he man out there and do some shit out there. I had a hell of a game for us to pull some shit out. But get yeah. us on the podium. Yeah. I was like, oh, we got to get out of here with something. Yeah, for sure. But, I mean, listen, everything ain't as easy as you think it is. It's not easy for guys to go play the, on the national team, and you don't play every year. That's why they changed the, the dynamic after that. Mm -hmm. After that year, they start getting the guys together for two years. Yep, world Two, at least two, three years together mm -hmm. and have the same cohesiveness because you're playing against teams now where all these guys have been playing together for 10 years. Yeah. They've, been, they've been groomed. They've been groomed to beat us. Mm -hmm. That's their mindset. And that, they play a game and play a style that we don't play. Our NBA game is more of an individual sport. When you play overseas, it's fundamentally and, and simple basketball. They're not doing all the extra stuff. They just yeah. keeping it simple. And they, and they, but they know each other. We know each other from as a competitive standpoint. But playing with each other, it's a, it's a, it's a time you gotta acclimate to each other and adjust and know what he likes, what he doesn't like, and <clears throat> and there's so many levels to it. Absolutely, and like you said with that the way that they play basketball, and you've played with some of the best international players ever. You know what I'm saying? Playing with Steve Nash and obviously playing with the one that did numbers down in this city, Dirt. Their approach to the game and how they play, like, it may not have been the flashiest, but it was always productive and it was always buckets. Was it a lot easier playing with a style of player like that? See, the team was different. Mm -hmm. My role was different. 
So, so one of the things I've been able to adjust to, I adjust to the team I have. I mean, if you follow me, you know that. So like, um, when I got here, they need me to do everything that everybody else wasn't gonna do. Yeah. So, so we had a great shooting team, you know what I'm saying? So, but they didn't have nobody slashing, they didn't have nobody just locking motherfuckers on the defense and, and doing the small little things. And, and that's, that's how we complement each other. When they needed me to score, I scored. When they needed me to lock somebody up, I locked them up. And it's just, or when they needed me to facilitate, I was able to do that as well too. So it just depends on what position they need and who we, who we was playing. And I think that's, that's the one thing about the game that you don't see a lot. You don't see a lot, it's, everything is it's consistent. Same thing now. Mm -hmm. But when you, when you see the real good teams, they adjust to, to different variations on the court and doing that game. You know, those, that, that was the reason why we was able to win that championship. We knew, we, knew, we knew how to hold people accountable and we knew how to adjust. And we played to the level of our, our, our opponents. That's how fucking good we were. Like, uh, wasn't nobody beating us that year. I don't give a fuck who we played. Uh, it's just that Tyson simple. Chandler don't get enough credit either. T.Y. was amazing. T.Y. and Brendan, the, the tandem between T.Y. and Brendan Haywood. Bro, dude, we yeah, had two yeah. seven-footers that was meeting you at the rim. Oh shit down, bro. I mean, like, nah. you know, Ty Tyson was a lot more verbal and aggressive than Brendan, but Brendan yeah. was out there. He was, he was sitting there waiting for you to get to the rim. Yeah. And, like, that's the thing. But you got guys locked up on the perimeter. We locked in. Me, Deshaun Stevenson, J. Kidd, all of us. Even Dirk. Even Dirk big, got his big ass down and was defending. You know what I'm <laughs> really? saying? So, like, when you, when you buy into that, that team concept, that's what you, and you, and you challenging everybody, you elevating each other. That's what, that's what it's about. Thanks. And like you said, I mean, the Miami Heat came in, big three, super talented team, but you could tell the difference between the teams of y'all was the mindset, the mental focus. Obviously, y'all being veterans, y'all was locked in. Wasn't nothing gonna sway y'all. And you could tell when they got rattled, y'all was gonna take it. Like, Jason Terry getting attacked, like, come on, like, y'all was a different level of locked in. Man, listen, man, you go back and I, uh, you don't, you don't get a lot of time to reflect on your career while you're playing because yeah. you, you're living in it. You're, you're, when you get time to really reflect on what you did in your career and the things that you did in this game and just look back and you're like, holy shit. Like, we, it was a hell of a run. And that run right there, oh, my God. D-Wade told this to me after we won a championship. He's like, enjoy this, enjoy this moment. But you not really know what you did until about a month later. And he wasn't lying. When all the dust and everything kind of mm. calmed down that summer, you know, I was doing all kinds of parties out here that year. But, uh, <laughs> but when that dust settled down, I got a chance to really reflect on that run we did. Mm -hmm. Dude, man, that was a hell of a fucking run. Nah, y'all beat some Dude, good teams. we beat some great teams. Yeah. Great teams. Shit, the, most deep, the deepest team in the league that year behind, behind us and Miami was Portland. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Portland had a lick. People were like, listen, don't let me wrong. Lakers were defending champions. Yeah, but they weren't as deep as Portland. Portland nah. had 10 guys, dude, that they that it literally could be starting on all the teams. You know what I'm saying? That's a fact. And uh, Brendan Roy was Kurt, Kurt kind of hurt at the time, but mm -hmm. uh, he, he still come back. But he still had one good game that was like, you know, he gave you the flashes of, of, of what he could possibly do. Yeah. But we just we just kept rising to the challenge, man. And it's like, you know, we, once we got that, we was locked in like that, man. Wasn't nobody stopping that shit. Nah, what it, was that party like? Like winning in Miami, then going to live and spending the big bag Cuban did. So what was that like? <laughs> so, <laughs> dude, it was lit. You know, I think you know, live was really kind of kind of coming back alive at that time. Yeah. That's when we were first really back opening it up, and uh, they was doing Sundays there. I mean, shit, dude, we we got that bitch. We turned it out. <laughs> Cuban, <laughs> Cuban, Cuban, Cuban bought that big ass um, uh, over extra Magnum or whatever that hundred yeah. hundred thousand dollar bottle, or whatever. Like had two people pouring the bottle, pouring it, man. Listen, I, I, you could just drip, drip, drip that whole thing on me and that bitch. <laughs> no, but we were just all just drinking, and it was just, it was just. I felt like it, it was just Dallas that took over Miami that night, yeah. and we was in there. Everybody was locked in, and it was like, uh, pause. <laughs> <laughs> I know you. I know I said it. You can drip that big thing on me. I'm like, yo, I fuck with you, man. But that was insane. Pause. I was waiting though. Pause. Uh, uh, so look, we've been scared since the, the Metal World Beat episode. Yeah, yeah. Hey, I didn't want to fuck up your story, but I'm like, cut the fucking mic. Pause. <laughs> Nah, for you sure. know what? I need a drink. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but that's got to be fire, though. Bro. To win the chip and celebrate somebody else's city is fire. Yeah, yeah especially I'm, Miami. I snuck an NBA championship out, right? It was literally this many people at our party. 
Nah, for real. Nah, he ain't bullshit. He was mad as hell when he came yeah. home. I, I said, man, I got to throw my own championship party. <laughs> Damn, did I also say throw a party? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, I couldn't he find him. back to the crib. Brooke Lopez walked in with his jersey on. I said, damn, it's just me and Brooke. Hey, this is... <laughs> yeah. With no vibes in there for Brooke. With no vibes for nobody. <laughs> it was like a, everybody from the front office. I was like, nah, I've seen the Dallas Mavericks win. And I've seen Sean Marion getting a drink poured on him. <laughs> Pause. <laughs> yeah. nah. Did you know, though, at the beginning of the year that y'all had a chance, though? I mean, I know you always want to play to win, but... So, so look... Every team has aspirations to win a championship every year. Right. When training camp come, every team has that goal. That's their coming in training camp. That's the focus. But guess what? Right. It's only about a handful of those teams actually going to speak that into existence. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Reality and perception are two different things. Reality, right. most of these teams know they ain't going to do shit. Yeah. Now, now, the parity in the league now today is totally different. But back then, though, no, listen, this is how strong our team was. My cousin was not here. We sitting in my living room when I was living in Preston Hollow at the time, uh -huh. and he was like, he looked at our roster. He literally looked at our roster. He was like, huh, 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 huh. He's like, cuz, y'all gonna win a championship this year. Y'all gonna do what y'all need to do, y'all gonna win a championship. I was like, you know what? I, shit, cuz, you, you kinda, I, I believe, you, you right. I'm looking at this motherfucker like, yeah, I'm looking at our roster, cuz we ain't had training camp yet. So we got some new guys that, you know, uh, some older guys who came in, but like, I'm like, you know what? You damn right. We go out and do what we need to do. Yeah. We're gonna win this motherfucker. So fast forward, training camp starts. We are in Orlando playing them for preseason. So D. Steve hosts, hosts half the team at the house and have a barbecue at the crib. Yeah, he got ATM in, in, yeah, in the living yeah, room yeah, and yeah. shit. Yeah. So we there. He got a guy, tattoo guy came over, and we grilling, and everybody just chopping up, talking shit. And Jet was like, yo, let me get this. I'm going to go and get this motherfucking uh, championship tattoo on my arm. I'm like, what? He's like, yeah, we winning this bitch this year. I was like, oh, shit. Okay, okay. <laughs> no, so he literally got tapped, he tatted on his arm, right in there. Man. It's just preseason. See, we ain't started the shit. I remember that. that I was didn't know it was preseason. I didn't know that right. that happened. I didn't know it was that no, early. No, it was preseason. We ain't played one game in the season yet. So oh, I was like, oh, shit, we locked in. Let's do this shit, Jet. I'm, I got you. Let's do this. So we come out the gates rolling. You know, we... we Karan go down within, I think, what, 15 games? Yeah. Tough one, tough one. But, like, man, we, we steady rolling, and everybody just locked in with each other, man. Like, you know, of course, you know, the season is so long. I think we finished, what, third or fourth that year? Something like that in the Western Conference. And, uh, but it didn't matter who we matched up with. We knew we, we, we had 18-game winning streaks that season. You know, we, we, we was doing it. So the West has always been strong like that, though. For, yeah. for the most part, for the longest of my career, we everybody was who made postseason was winning fifty plus games. So, but anyway, we get through the year and we and we play uh, Portland that first round. And man, when I tell you, we was locked in and we looked at each other's in the eyes, and it was a there was a feeling in the locker room. The whole the whole the whole dynamic and whole culture in our environment. When you walked into that locker room, you knew that we was on a mission. For sure. You 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 got you would have felt that energy and got that energy. And regardless of all the naysayers and the media and shit, they kept uh, talk. They picked Port they picked some. They picked Portland to win that series. Yeah, we were say y'all weren't the, the favorites to pick. They picked series. Lakers to win. Fact. They picked OK OKC to win. They picked Miami to win. Every I was like, I tell you, the motherfuckers don't know shit about basketball because we beat the dog shit out of everybody. <laughs> no, y'all did, y'all did. Now nah, facts. Now I got so, a question for you. Um, we got a fan question. Um, they want to know if this is true or not. You know what I'm saying? Obviously, we know what happened. You know what I'm saying? Got about a Phoenix. Is it true there was a possibility that you could have went to Boston? Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. So, <clears throat> doing that process right before KG went, I was getting calls. So, so you know this. So, being the NBA, there's a lot of people calling about asking about people. That don't mean they up a trade. Mm -hmm. It's part of the business part of the game. So, like, people can call and inquire about anything. Like, and they ask. So it was calling, Boston was calling like crazy. And, uh, I was like, uh, the ball is, they was like, Boston is calling about you, Sean, and we, we ain't entertain it. Don't worry about it. You're not going anywhere. I was like, okay, that's enough said. I'm not even thinking about it. You know, and of course, that stuff ended up making it trickling down to you here and there. But like, listen, it's part of the business. Get it, eat it. And then uh, they traded for KG afterwards. They figured out that KG, they, I guess he agreed to it, and that's when he went and left. But I didn't, I wouldn't like, I wouldn't entertain it. I had to agree to it. Mm. 
before the show, we was talking about, obviously, I, don't, I, we, I love basketball, but I like to talk about the other stuff. Yeah. So we were talking about the cities you played in, and I was like, bruh, you a lucky man, bruh. You played in some fire cities. You Amazing. got Phoenix, Miami, Toronto, Dallas, just to name a few. Like, what was your, uh, we in Dallas, so never mind. But what, what was your favorite city, like? So, so honestly, man, all of them was different phases in my career. Yeah. Like I was, my mindset was totally different every team I went to. So, uh, but the, <laughs> you know what, man? It it sucked being the team was losing. Yeah, Toronto. But T dot. <laughs> Hey, I tell them all the time. <laughs> yo, hey, yo, yo T, Toronto, man. <laughs> T, you should have been a rapper, my boy. <laughs> Come on, man. Yo. I was trying to get to Toronto with all my heart. <laughs> yo. Listen, but you ain't want to pay them taxes, though. Nah, I no, would have paid. Them taxes is mad. Yeah, I would pay. <laughs> <laughs> taxes is crazy there. I was, I was hoping I was on the minimum. <laughs> <laughs> pay that fee. Yo, man, some T. Dot is a motherfucker, boy. Man. Woo. Lord have mercy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, reminiscing right now. <laughs> the real Matrix. <laughs> Ooh, shit. <laughs> yeah, how did you get that nickname, though, the Matrix? Ooh, Kenny Smith, this is my game. Kenny Smith. Yeah, yeah, first game ever. Preseason, we uh, we playing. So this, you didn't get a chance to play in the forum. No. Nah. I, I didn't play regular season, but my first year was the last preseason tournament they had before they closed it. Staple season, Staple Center opened. Uh, beginning of the season. Okay. So we in there, and they had a tournament, preseason tournament. It was me. It was Phoenix, Lakers, of course. I think uh, Sacramento, a couple of of other team in there. So every year they did it. So first game ever, preseason. Dude, I get a steal, block, and and one all in like a a sequence. And Kenny Smith was like, oh, my God, you see that? He's the Matrix. And that was it. Everywhere I was going, everybody was calling me the Matrix. And, you know, Kenny Smith's always been the guy who give everybody nicknames. Yeah. And that's it. I became a household name. For sure. That's fire. Getting a nickname your first NBA game is yeah. that's fire. I got to ask. drink? I, oh, yeah. We, yeah we, I we, ain't drank this one, bro. It's on you. It's hey, water. It's, that's water now, though. Oh, damn. Tread lightly over there. Tread, you see the shoes I you got on you. He went to be City careful. House. Tread lightly. <laughs> I think, that's all, I think Sean, walked, Sean no. was in that motherfucker too. No, I wasn't. <laughs> and, and I will not be taking no drinks from your ass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I try to slide. At you. I'm I don't a real boy. Like how you passing over here? Though. Look. Like, hey, he moved the napkin though. <laughs> You're the real bartender. Oh no, that's a sick no. bartender. Balls. Balls. That's crazy. Double I'm balls. Crazy, bro. Obviously, you still watch ball. Uh, what young players you say you could see like remind you of yourself? So you know, uh, you know, during the draft every year they try to play young and uncoming guys to guys that played before them. You know, yeah. man, listen, I don't, I don't see nobody out there that do. See, I, I used to say Kawhi a little bit because he, I feel like he never got tired on the court. Yeah, and he plays both ends of the floor. You know, but uh, you know, I, I just think uh, I was uh, a lot more athletic than and jumping and rebounding than Kawhi is. But, you know, for this energy and effort, you know, any versatile small forward that, you know, it's like mm-hmm. a little bit of this, a little bit of that, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, I, I just feel like I was uh, one of a kind, man. And this is what it is. Yeah, like to me, like defensively, you were like Draymond, but offensively, you were like your own type of person because you yeah. can run pick and rolls with the ball or you yeah. can set them, slip out, dunk, you can hit the corner three, you can shoot. You could attack off the dribble. So you weren't – nobody really played like you on offense now. But no. defensively, you were like Draymond because you can go at one through five. Yeah. I remember when, even when you was in Cleveland, you were switching all the ball screens. So, like, so you know, it's funny. We talk about that. We talk about the versatility of defenders and stuff. And I was like, you know, Draymond, I think I love his tenacity, love his energy, love his heart. But I still think I'm, I was a way better defender than he was. And the reason I say that is because when I had to guard – Point guard, point when when I actually guarded you, I guarded you for the whole game. No, nah, yeah, yeah. I didn't. It wasn't no, mm. no, no, no few minutes here and there or trying to spare somebody. I guarded. I locked in with you guys for the whole game, and like most guys ain't doing that. True. You're, yeah. So it's easy for and it's way simpler for guys just to, to do with every possession and switch. Everybody switch now, but I mean I can guard somebody for a quarter. It's easy to do that. Let me guard that guy for the whole game, though. Most guys is not doing it. I'm the only person ever in NBA history to do that. 
Only person. Nobody guard no one through five, not the whole game. Now, that might, that's a, that's I got a question. A fact. Yeah. Obviously, you know what I'm saying? You guard some of the best in the league. Who are some of the people who gave you like the most trouble? So, so early in my career, one of, one of my favorite players was Jamal Masburn. Bucky. He was a big body, small forward that could handle the ball. And just, he, was, he wasn't very athletic, but he was shifty. Mm-hmm. And very creative at getting his shot off, man. And uh, he, he had a, you know what I'm saying, game to him that was so smooth, man. And, you um, know, give him a shout out to Jamal, man. He, I, he was one of my, my guys helped me elevate, you know what I'm saying. But at that time, you know, um, shoot, all the small fours was pretty, pretty talented at the time. How was it like guard Melo? Melo was. Carmelo. <laughs> Carmelo. Now nah, we're going to say Melo. Melo ain't there yet. It's a real Melo still. <laughs> so Carmelo is, Carmelo was tough. I was already three years in the league, I think. I, was, I think I was three or four years in the league already when he came in. But, man, yeah. he, was, he was tough because, you know, he was, he was, he was man, he was, trying to, he was trying to score every time he got the ball, man. Yeah. Yeah. Like, he ain't, he ain't believing passing the rock. So, <laughs> no assist. So, you know, once you got him, he like, man, yo, we, we finna go at it. Nah, for sure. Well, I think we should be talking about Hall of Fame, right? Oh, shit. You don't mm, think what you so? talking about? Yeah, go ahead. I think you should be a Hall of Famer. Like, with all the accolades you got, all the things you did playing basketball, like, from college on, I think you got a Hall of Fame career, me personally. And shout-out to the Phoenix Suns for tiring the number, you know what I'm sure. saying? That's the start. That's what's up. That's, That's what's start. up. That's the start. You know, man, you know, um, I've, I've been having this conversation. People have been asking me that a lot. And I, and I thank you because, you know, at the end of the day, but you're not the ones voting. Yeah. You're not the ones who's picking. Yeah. So, like, a lot of things are not in your control. But one of the things that y'all are, and we, we all can agree that, though, when you, when, you, when you earn something, you feel like you should get that reward, right? Yeah. yeah. Versus yeah. it's like nobody going, somebody come in here, y'all doing a job, and I'm going to pay you when I feel like it. That's the yeah. mentality with some, yeah. sometimes when things go on. And, you know, yeah. one of the things I've been truly blessed, man, I, I take none of this for granted. I'm able to do things that a lot of people would never get the chance to do. Yeah. You know, and I'm seeing the world. And, and I, I don't take none of this for granted. And, like, I'm, I'm okay. I know what I did to this game. You know what I'm saying? I know, I know exactly what imprint I left on this game and, and who I am. Yeah. And I, I'm comfortable, man. And that's it. A lot of the, a lot of the, I can't control what nobody else do. I only can control myself. So well, your that's peers, what's up. Your peers know yeah, yeah, no that doubt. you was one of them guys, man. So I wouldn't be surprised if down the road it happened for you. But your peers definitely know you no, was one appreciate of them. That. And, and most importantly, up. we know, too. No doubt, no doubt. For sure, for sure. And on that note, we're going to get up out of here. Matrix, appreciate you sliding on this big dog. Thank you, thank you. Love, love, love.